I think I'll show monitor two. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about today is just something pretty simple, and it's it's just something that anybody using any of the free versions of SharePoint 2007, SharePoint 2007, WSS, or 2010, or um, Foundation, or any of that, you can do the solution. So the problem was just our, our Birmingham SharePoint users group every month when I put up the new announcements. Um, I want them all to pretty much, so let me pull up a better one. I want them all to pretty much look like the standard look. So it's going to have like all this basic information about the, the meeting and a certain font and then everything's lined up a certain way and it's got certain colors and you know and then the click to attend. And so I found myself just spending just an inordinate, inordinate amount of time every month just taking, um, just doing the formatting to make each announcement look you know, like in the same format. I even sometimes, you know, if they have a picture, we put their picture in it. So I just whipped up a, a workflow, so I just kind of thought I'd show y'all what it entails. So let me show you, I'm going to show you what it does, and then I'll show you how I'll open up SharePoint Designer 2007 and show you how I did it. And this is, of course, it's something you can do in 2010 or 2007. This, this is a free user group meeting site that Rackspace gave us, so it's 2007, so it's fine. All right, so I've created a list called Event Creation. So this is going to be, um, I, I use this to kind of as I go, as I'm kind of gathering who the sponsors are going to be and who the speakers are going to be every month, I kind of keep this list going. And sometimes I'll find out the speaker one day and I'll find out who the sponsor is going to be a couple weeks later. And so I just kind of build out the list and it's not anything that's necessarily anybody can see. So... For example, I'm just going to make up one because, uh, let's see, does it matter who's going to be happening to go to the site while I'm doing the demo, right? So the title is going to be the name of um, the, the speaker's title of their presentation. And then the date, it's always going to be the second Tuesday of every month. And then I'm just going to say Kristen Rogers. And that's my daughter. <laughs> So, and then I'll show you why I'm doing this gender thing in a second. So, image URL. So, I need to go grab her image URL. So, I'm going to go ahead and click OK and just save that. And then go um, over to my picture library and grab the URL to her image real quick. Oh, isn't she cute? Okay, so here is the JPEG. And then I'll go back in and edit this item and put the URL in there. So that's what will show up on the announcement. And the registration URL is just going to be like the click to attend thing that I create. So I'm just going to make something up. And then um, So this is going to be like the text that shows, you know, under, as the description, as the abstract of whatever the session is. And then a lot of the times the sponsor is the same person that's um, speaking. So I'll just make up one SharePoint 911 and then the sponsor URL. And then her title is... No, we'll see. I'll just call her SharePoint Consultant. <laughs> All right, and then, uh, so, so again, I keep this sort of running lists going. And then when I'm ready to yeah. make this an actual announcement and put it on the home page, then this is the workflow that I'm going to show you. Laura? So I run this workflow. Yes? Um, I think they're asking, can yes. you maximize your screen, your browser window? Um, do you want me to maybe share, just share my other screen since it's on my gigantic monitor? So I'll do that. I'll just share my other screen. Does that help? That looks 
I can I can zoom in a little. Do I need to zoom in, or is this good? Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and kick off this workflow, and then I'll show you what it does, and then I'll show you how I put it together. All right, so the workflow ran, and now look at my home page. <laughs> so it put together this nicely formatted announcement for me, and now it's showing on my home page and everything. You know, have the title, uh, the abstract here, and then the big description here, and then the click to attend. See, I, it just goes to Google because that's the URL that I put in there. So anyway, so this is just my quick way of getting the presentations out here. And also, if you have multiple users creating these announcements, it keeps it nice and tightly controlled. So you don't have all these different people putting all this random, like, crazy fonts and things like that. Because I've seen some crazy fonts in, in SharePoint announcements. So I'm going to go ahead and open this site up and show you how I did the workflow. Good old SharePoint 2000, Designer 2007. All right, open workflow. All right, so this is the fun part. And uh, yeah, y'all let me know if you can't see it or if the words are too small or anything like that. So, because I can't, well, I can't really zoom in on SharePoint Designer like I can on the browser. But uh, so the first thing I do is I'm I'm creating a variable. So I'm storing. So what I did was I went to just. SharePoint Designer, and I just kind of used it as like a web editor, and I created sort of, well, I created an announcement that looked the way I want it to look, and then I basically hit Code View, and then just grabbed all the code. So I grabbed the code of the announcement with all the right colors. Does that make sense? So I grabbed it, and, and that way this, this has all the formatting. This is all the HTML code that of the formatting of the announcement with all the right colors and all the right alignments and the picture in a certain place and things like that. So what I did was in each spot where there's like a variable that changes, that's where I inserted the information from the, that's where I'm going to insert the information from the event that I just created. So I took um, Tuesday, like for example, so it's going to say the announcement is going to be on Tuesday, and then I have the name of the month, the name of the day, and the name of the year. Where I think these are just calculated columns in the, in the list. And then, like, look down here. So it's got the speaker name here. So let me show you where that is. So our speaker this month is Kristen Rogers. So I'll flip back over to SharePoint Designer. And then you can see um, our speaker this month is, and it's got, that. this is where it's putting her name, and then our title. And then also, it says, Kristen will be teaching us all about SharePoint. Um, the, remember when I had the field that said he or she? Well, this is where I use it in this sentence. Our speaker this month is Kristen Rogers, and it's got her title. And it says, and she will be speaking about. So that's just a variable that I use in the workflow. So it's basically got gender, and she. Just, and just putting this gender field we'll be speaking about. And so basically it's all a bunch of HTML code with all the variables that change for each meeting, like the topic and the description, they're all placed in the correct spots. Does anybody have any questions about the way this looks, about this formatting? Okay. Um, I guess, Jamise, let me know if you see any questions as I go. Um, all right. So yes, I'm I create good. that variable. And in SharePoint 2010, you're not going to need to do this store dynamic uh, dynamic variable. You're just going to be able to do uh, set workflow variable, and it will let you use that little ellipsis to go in there and just create whatever string you want to be stored in that variable. So then, then I store the month and the year meeting, so like September 2011 meeting. And then I add a day to the event date to create the expiration. Because after the meeting is over, 
I want the, the meeting to fall off of the announcements list. I, I, I want it to automatically not show on my web page anymore. So I'm adding one day. I'm creating a variable here. So this is add date, add time to date. So I'll go ahead and add that in here just so I can show you how I did it. Add time to date. So that's what this is. I'll move it up. So I did, I added one day, two, and then I just took the event date field off of the current item. And then that's how I created this variable. Okay? So I added one day, and now this date that's being stored in this variable here is going to be the next day after the meeting's over. So then when I create the item in the announcements list, it takes the title. So this title text variable, which is just name of the month, name of the day, and the, um, let's see, is it the name of the month, name of the day, and meeting. So it takes that and it puts it as the title of the announcement. So let's go back over to the announcement and look at that. And that's actually not a field that I decided to show on here. So for me, when I'm editing the items and things, I can see the title of the announcement as like, you know, like the title that I click on to go edit things behind the scenes. But when I put this web part on the home page, I only put the body of the announcement here. So the title, again, and then the expires is going to be that variable that I set. So expires is a field that exists in all announcements. And then I have the body, which is that big, crazy variable that I created, the body text variable with all the HTML formatting. So it's pretty simple, just title, expiration, and body uh, when it creates an item, and that's it. So it's just those four steps in the workflow. Um, so then when I put the web part on the home page, this is just, I really just put the uh, announcements list on here and then just basically created my own custom view of it. And now announcements are a little tricky because um, when you put the announcements web part on the home page, it doesn't let you modify much with the view. So what I did was I went to the announcements list first and created a view called details and I created a view called web part. So this view called web part, this is exactly, so you know, just to create a new view, this is exactly what I want to show in the web part when it gets uh, created. So it's got the only field it's showing is the body. So this is my web part view. And then when I went to the home page and I inserted the announcements list on here, instead of, instead of using just the out of the box, just regular default, uh, default view it gives you for the announcements, I changed it to my web part view and then clicked OK and that's what let it show the announcement with just the body just showing it the way I want and then when the meeting's over it will just roll off and it won't show anymore. And then so and this is also cool because think about SharePoint 2010 and how you can do um, impersonation steps now. So we could if we wanted to tightly control like the way our just sort of different we can create the same sort of concept and instead, and not give them access to the announcements list itself, only give them access to that event creation list or whatever you want to call it. And that, and you could use an impersonation step so that when they, when they run the workflow off of this event creation, the workflow will create the item in the announcements using impersonation, even if that person doesn't have access. So there's like a really tightly controlled system and you can have some really nice looking announcements or, or whatever your list happens to be on your site. That's it.